So now we're doing 12.4, which is solving a system of linear and quadratic equations, but this we are not doing the graphing method, okay? We're just gonna solve it using a different technique. Now, using elimination does not work on systems that have a nonlinear function. So if these were both linear functions, I could use the elimination method and solve it. But because this one is not linear, and over here, this one is not linear, that means I can't use the elimination method. So the only other method I can use, if I can't use graphing and I can't use elimination, the only other method I can use to solve a system is a substitution. And since you already have y all by itself, actually you have y all by itself in both of these equations, but you only need the y variable by itself in one equation, okay? Um, so if I choose this one, then basically what I'm gonna do is if y is equal to all of this, then that's what I'm gonna substitute into the other equation. So the new equation, basically combining these two together, will become x squared plus seven x minus five, which is what we had for y, equal to 6x plus 7. And then it's a quadratic, so I would try to get all the terms over to one side and then solve the resulting quadratic equation. And so then I can figure out what this is, x plus 4 and x minus 3 if I factor it. If you don't want to factor or you can't factor, do the quadratic formula. So I get this factor equal to 0, this factor equal to zero. So I get x equals a negative four and x equals to three. So then that means I'm gonna get my y value. Now I like to plug my x's into the linear one. You can plug them into the quadratic, you'll get the same value, but I just like to plug them into the linear just because it's a little bit easier to compute. So I get negative 24 plus seven, which is negative 17. <coughs> excuse me over here I get um, I get 18 plus 7 which is 25 so I have two points as my answer negative 4 which gave me a negative 17 y value and 3 for x which gave me a 25 for y and these two things are my solution and Alex you just separate them with a comma okay now I'm gonna go ahead and try to solve this equation, this system in the exact same method. So instead of using y here, y is equal to this. So I'm gonna take all of this and plug it into there. I end up with this equation. Then I'm gonna try to get everything over to one side. So I end up with, why did I put a seven there? Should have been four. So those cancel, those cancel, I have nothing on the right hand side. And over here I have x squared plus 7x plus, I believe, 18. Now this one, um, let's see. I don't think that I can factor that one. If it were a negative 18, I might have been able to factor it, but not when it's a um, positive 18. Well, yeah, hmm, I know nine, let's see, 18. I know two times nine and three times six, four and five, no, and six is already on the list. Now these will add to give me seven. Um, no, these will add to give me 11. They would subtract to give me seven and I can't subtract, I'm supposed to be adding. So I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. So negative B, plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let me see what I get under there. 49 minus 4 times 1 times 18. I get a negative 23 over 2. This means it's imaginary, right? When you have a negative inside the square root, it means it's imaginary. And think about that. If you're trying to graph this, that it, they're never going to intersect because you don't see imaginary things on the graph, right? So if I get an imaginary, that basically means no solution here, okay? These two guys are never going to intersect at all, okay? 
Um, and you could verify on your own by graphing them. I'm going to cheat just because I don't spend too much time on this. I'm actually going to grab a graphing calculator real quick, even though I know you guys are not supposed to be using one. Um, just so that you can see that they actually intersect. Plus 3x minus 3. And my second equation is negative 4x minus 21. Zoom. I'm still thinking. So see, there's what they look like. Here's the parabola and here's the line. And these two things never, ever, ever touch. Okay. And that will come out play when you try to do substitution because you when you get an imaginary answer, you can't graph an imaginary. So you can't see where these two things are intersecting. So they just don't intersect. That's the conclusion there.